and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the different kinds of cardiomyopathies. We will learn this topic by solving questions so that we get a deeper understanding of it. If you're interested in medical videos, quizzes, Q&A sessions with doctors, and many other things related to medicine, do subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram. Question number one. Cardiac hypertrophy is seen in Option A, acromegaly. Option B, dilated cardiomyopathy. Option C, both. The answer to this question is both. In acromegaly, there is an increased growth hormone activity. This makes everything bigger, even the heart. Both the ventricles will undergo hypertrophy. In acromegaly, there is concentric hypertrophy. This means that sarcomeres are added parallel to each other. This leads to a very thick ventricular wall and a very tiny ventricular chamber. Filling takes place during diastole and emptying takes place during systole. In these patients, since there is very little space, the filling is reduced. Low filling leads to diastolic heart failure. Dilated cardiomyopathy has hypertrophy as well, but this kind is known as a centric hypertrophy. The sarcomeres are added in series. This means they are added next to each other, resulting in a very large chamber. This gives it the name dilated cardiomyopathy. Since the chamber is big, there is enough filling, but the heart muscles aren't able to contract well. This leads to systolic heart failure. In conclusion, both acromegaly and dilated cardiomyopathy are characterized by cardiac hypertrophy. Question number two. Which of the following can have a preserved ejection fraction? Option A, restrictive cardiomyopathy. Option B, dilated cardiomyopathy. Option C, none. The answer to this question is restrictive cardiomyopathy. The issue in restrictive cardiomyopathy is that the ventricular wall is rigid. This can be brought about by different substances being deposited here, like, like in the case of amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, and hemochromatosis. This leads to a decrease in the heart's ability to expand. Low expansion leads to low filling, eventually leading to diastolic heart failure. Ejection fraction can be understood as stroke volume divided by the end diastolic volume. The ventricles get filled during diastole, so end diastolic volume refers to the amount of blood in the heart after diastole. When the ventricles contract, they pump blood out. The amount of blood pumped out is known as stroke volume. So, basically, the ejection fraction measures the systolic function of the heart. In dilated cardiomyopathy, the heart is filled well, so EDV is fine. But the ventricles aren't able to contract well, so very little blood is pumped out. Hence, the stroke volume is decreased, leading to a low ejection fraction. In restrictive cardiomyopathy, the ventricles don't expand much, so the end diastolic volume is low. But from all the blood that comes into the ventricles, a good amount of it is pushed out. Although the amount of blood leaving the heart is less, the fraction of blood pumped out of the ventricles is normal. Hence, patients with restrictive cardiomyopathy and diastolic failure in general are likely to have a preserved ejection fraction. Question number 3. Mutation in genes encoding sarcomioproteins is seen in Option A. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy Option B. Dilated cardiomyopathy Option C. Both Option D. None The answer to this question is both. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has concentric hypertrophy. The sarcomeres are added in parallel and, and there is a low chamber volume. This results in decreased filling and hence leads to diastolic heart failure. Hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy has, has an irregularly hypertrophic interventricular septum. It has a unique murmur. If you want to learn about different murmurs and how they change with specific cardiac maneuvers, take a look at this video. It has MCQs as well. 
Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can be caused due to a mutation in the genes coding for myosin binding protein C and beta myosin. The familial type of dilated cardiomyopathy is caused due to a mutation in the TTN gene which codes for the protein Titan. Other causes of dilated cardiomyopathy are virus, alcohol, beriberi, and Chagas disease. Question number four. Which of the following is unlikely to be heard in patients with dilated cardiomyopathy? Option A, S3. Option B, S4. Option C, systolic murmur at the apex radiating to the axilla. The answer to this question is S4. S3 is seen in case of fluid overload. In dilated cardiomyopathy, there is very little contraction, so blood tends to back up. This is why people with dilated cardiomyopathy can have lower extremity edema and ascites. Systolic murmur at the apex radiating to the axilla indicates mitral regurgitation. This is how I think of it. Here's a normal heart and these are the mitral valves. When the chambers expand as seen in dilated cardiomyopathy, the space between the mitral valve leaflets also increase. This increases the chance of blood to flow back into the atrium. Hence, dilated cardiomyopathy can lead to mitral regurgitation. S4 is usually seen in left ventricular hypertrophy when the wall is stiff. Question number 5. Systolic heart failure after chemotherapy. What is the most likely cause? Option A. Anthracycline. Option B. Methotrexate. Option C, azathioprine. Option D, amiodarone. The answer to this question is anthracycline. Anthracyclines are chemotherapeutic agents which can cause dilated cardiomyopathy. Examples are doxorubicin and donorubicin. Dexrazoxane is an iron chelating agent which can be used to prevent cardiotoxicity. Question number 6. Sarcoidosis can potentially cause which of the following? Option A, restrictive cardiomyopathy. Option B, dilated cardiomyopathy. Option C, both. The answer to this question is both. We learned that it causes restrictive cardiomyopathy in the previous questions. Sarcoidosis and hemochromatosis can cause both restrictive as well as dilated cardiomyopathies. I want to end this video by talking about broken heart syndrome. It is known as Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Takotsubo apparently means octopus pot in Japanese. It gets its name because during systole, there is ventricular apical dilation of the heart which makes it look like an octopus pot. This is brought about by extreme stress. The increased sympathetic activity due to stress leads to this condition. In rare cases, it can be fatal, so it is possible to die of a broken heart. Another reason why we should take mental health seriously. If you like this video and want me to make more like this, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends to help them learn and revise. Subscribe to my channel because all my videos are free of cost. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.